The reason why we are setting on Gatarungai is to prove the concept that fish rearing can be done in the most driest areas. We also wanted to validate the concept that you can be able to rear fish next to the market. We are able to make money from the fish poop that we get, that we collect daily. They go to the toilet daily, right? Yeah. This is the first uh, vertical lake in the world. In Kenya's dry plains of Rongai, something extraordinary is happening. Fish are thriving in a desert. This is a vertical lake, Kenya's first vertical aquaculture project that could define how we grow food in the face of climate change. Hello, my name is Wendy Cynthia and welcome to Vertical Lake. I'm the business development lead and I'll be taking you through the journey of Vertical Lake. The biggest contaminants are ourselves, so we have to disinfect the feet, then wash our hands here. Okay. We wanted to solve a problem for biofeed feeds, yes. which uh, offered um, feeds to animals. And in the market there is competition of omena for animal consumption mm -hmm. and for human consumption. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to rear our own omena to be able to fill that gap. Okay. Hence we. Uh, the founder Jack took yes. some nuanza babs, that's the omena from the lake, mm -hmm. and brought them to Nairobi so that he could be able to rear them yes. uh, and solve his problem, but they all died. So it sparked uh, curiosity f with him of why they died. He's a pathologist, so he went to study why they died. Mm -hmm. And this is where he found out that for omena to thrive, you need to duplicate the same environments found in the lake mm -hmm. uh, in the the systems you'll be rearing them yeah. and hence vertical lake was born so the water comes from rainwater that we collect from the greenhouse of it is stored in our tank and is pumped through the solar panels to mimic the flow of water so the water is pumped from here and it flows up to the further end where you are so we are able to monitor the water through the CCTV cameras and track the health of the fish. Using volume, we are also able to know how our fish has been able to grow. So depending on the quantity of the fish here, we are able to calculate their body mass and feed more accurately. <laughs> uh, to increase the oxygen supply, we provide artificial oxygen uh, for the fish. So we have the, the water aerators. So the product has been in development for the last five years, mm -hmm. uh, still working on and perfecting vertical lake. Mm -hmm. And when the Nyanza Babs were able to you know, thrive and grow. Mm. Uh, there are some also um, tilapia fingerlings that were there yeah. that also thrived. Mm -hmm. So we were like, uh, which uh, fish would give us more value? Is it the omena or, or is the it the tilapia? Mm -hmm. And the tilapia stood out because of its many medical benefits mm -hmm. and also it's preferred mm -hmm. by most Africans for consumption. So we thought why not tilapia mm -hmm. and we are currently doing 100% organic tilapia mm -hmm. so when we get our our fish from lake victoria this is where we rear them this so this is more or less like our nursery our holding area so that they can grow stronger before we move them to the vertical lake systems so here they are these are one month old from Toroka. After the research stage and the development of the product, we had zero mortality for the omena and even currently we are not experiencing any losses in terms of mortality left of the tilapia. We have a subsidiary company there in UK where we are trying out the salmon. We harvest water from rainwater yes. and is stored in the tanks and the water is pumped through solar panels yes. that are installed on top of the greenhouse okay, okay. this makes sure we have constant supply of energy mm -hmm. right we feed with our organic feeds from the biofeed feeds mm -hmm. use water hy water hyacinths for the feeds okay and then we have a biofiltration process that has no chemicals no antibiotics and it's fully automated mm -hmm. and this biofiltration process helps us collect fish poop 
that mm -hmm. we use to make our blue harvest, the organic plant food. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the fish themselves that give us the protein. So we sell finger, uh, fish fillets. Yes. Boneless fish. Mm -hmm. And then with the bones, we use them to make the collagen, the medical collagen and the bioplastic that we use to package our fish. Uh -huh. So everything in our ecosystem is used. We only lose 2% water that is obtained back from the poop. Mm -hmm. right? So we lose nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's a hundred percent. So you recycle everything? Yes. To okay. make sure that our farming is efficient, we have IoT devices to help us monitor the pH, uh, the pH of the water and the conditions to make sure that they match that of the lake. We also have AI models that we are currently training uh, so that they can be able to make our farming more efficient mm -hmm. and more accurate. Yeah. The AI is more of a farm assistant, so it helps us gather information, gather data about the fish, yes. how they are developing, how fast they are growing in case they have um, abnormal habits we are able to track it and spot it uh, very fast mm -hmm. so the model is still in training uh, we are not yet to commercialize it because we need a lot of data mm -hmm. how the fish behaves how they they feed how they grow we're still gathering that information but it helps us monitor and farm our fish more efficiently The greenhouse provides the right temperature for, for it to thrive. How big are these troughs? Uh, they vary based on where we are putting them, but our current capacity is 5,000 per tank. But they can be as low as 500. 5,000 fingerlings? Fish, mature fish. Mature fish. Yes, our capacity, we have two modules that have four stacks. Our yeah. current capacity is uh, 40,000. Yeah, so the biggest contaminants are ourselves. So we have to disinfect the feet, then wash our hands here. Yeah. So here are Ines are all 5,000 fish uh -huh. when they are mature. But to Akikua Wadogo, to Nezeka, 10,000. You need Wadogo. So, you need to say it's Gani? I want I think, three months. How is it different from the environment that killed the fish for the first time? So, our water is always in movement. So mm -hmm. our water is always moving. We also introduce uh, microorganisms that are also in the lake here. So it, like it's just a lake, it's just, it flows vertically, uh, but in the Lake Victoria flows horizontally. Mm -hmm. So ours, the water is constantly moving. Via uh, courtesy of solar. Yes. So what happened at night when we don't have the sunlight? The solar panels are powerful enough. We have batteries. Okay, you Yes, yeah, we, we store with batteries. Okay. Yeah. The reason why we are set in Ongatarungai is to prove the concept that fish rearing can be done in the most driest areas. We also wanted to validate the concept that you can be able to rear fish next to the market. So Nairobi is just here. So if you want fish fillets today, you just call me and I'll fish and prepare and deliver the same day. And we have been able to make fish farming more sustainable because kama ni kuku, you get mayai every day, right? Yes. But for fish, you have to wait for eight to six months to be for able to mature. for you to mature so that you can sell. But for us, we are able to make money from the fish poop that we mm -hmm. get, that we collect daily. They go to the toilet daily, right? Yeah. So we're able to collect the bio waste every single day, making our farming more sustainable. How big are the fishes, the tilapia? Between 800 grams to 500 grams. That's a recommended size to harvest. You can harvest even at 350, 400 grams. For fish fillets, we recommend it at 500 to 600 so that you're able to get more meat from it. Hello. I'm going to get a fish. 
Amna, amna. Tumekuja kuangalia fish fillets. After we harvest our fish from the vertical lake system, we process them in the kitchen area, which is here. And then we store them here with the coolers that are also solar powered. So everything in the facility runs on solar. So we are 100% green. Any challenges maybe? No, our biosecurity is very strict. So before, we only have one person that's verified to be inside the greenhouse, yeah. right? So they have to disinfect their, their shoes, they have to wash their hands before going, and we make sure there are no outside contaminants coming in the, um, the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. So zero mortality rate as of now. Where do you see this project in the next five years? Well, I see more vertical lakes everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, in places where there is no access to water. Um, I'm seeing food security. Uh, we have been able to prove with our Blue Harvest fertilizer that you can reduce cost of production by 30% and still pro, uh, produce high quality products. So I see myself uh, being a champion and as championing um, in organic farming and more sustainable farming in Kenya. You should expect more vertical lakes in the future. In a world facing water stress and food insecurity, the vertical lake proves that innovation doesn't always mean using more. Sometimes it means using smarter. From rain to fish, from waste to soil, this is the future of food powered by the sun. Until next time, I'm your host, Isaiah Esipisu. Goodbye.